Hey there, I'm Lucas Bond with the Missouri Department of Conservation. And today on Habitat Hints, we're gonna be talking about late season prescribed burns and why we do them and how it helps and benefits the environment and habitat. I'm joined with MDC's Jeremy Caps, and he's gonna tell us a little bit more all we need to know about prescribed fire during late season. Let's turn this around. All right, Jeremy, so we're talking late season prescribed burns. What's the reason behind that, and when is the best time to do a late season prescribed burn? Well, right now, we burnt this one the latter part of August. Usually, you want to try to get in that latter part of, of the growth season, kind of late August to early, mid part of September. You still get a lot of good growth. The plants are still good and green. They'll carry a fire. The good thing about a late season fire is you don't get the really big flame height that you will with the prescribed fire in the spring. It's a lot lower. It, and it stays smaller, but it's still really hot. And you, what, one of the things that we were doing with this unit is we had a lot of Cerecia lespidiza that was starting to come up, uh, scattered through it. Plus, we also had a, we're starting to get a lot of woody encroachment. So the late season burns are really good because they are they burn so hot that you get a, it kills the, the woody plants out of it. Mm -hmm. Along with also getting that Cerecia lespidiza when it's still it's still flying a little bit and the oils are really high in Cerecia lespidiza, so it burns really hot, kills the plant. And it resets everything down where maybe you don't have to use as much herbicide to try to control invasives like that, while also generating really good habitat as far as you get a lot of good forbs when you do a late season burn, you kind of reduce the grass. So if you have a track of ground that you're needing to, to thin it out so that you can provide that good small game cover where they've got a lot of good overhead with mm -hmm. open underneath, you can get that late season burn. And usually within two years, you'll get a really good forb response without having to plant anything. There's usually always a good seed bank there. It just takes a little bit of management. So with doing that late season burn, you kind of help reduce that grass component. You get a lot more open cover underneath. You get rid of the woodies. You don't have to use as much herbicide and really provide some good quality habitat for for your small game. And Now, so now late season burns, Jeremy, I mean, when, when would you say a late, good time for late season burns? I mean, August, September, October? Usually, if, if you can kind of hit that latter August, uh, we did this the very last week in August, and we got a really good response, and then that way it also gives some time for stuff to sprout back up, so it's not sitting there bare soil all winter long. That, I mean, you already see we're starting to get some milk. Oh, yeah, there's yeah. even some milkweed species that are starting to pop up. They won't get real tall, but they will probably, someone will go ahead and flower and provide another food source for pollinators as they're coming through. Awesome. So that, you know, that way you've got some stuff coming back up to help hold the soil in place. And a lot of things will, you know, they may not flower, but you'll have that good cover. Um, ideally, what we're going for, this one we split the unit up to try to have a little bit of rotational cover. Then we've got stuff over here that, so that we've got escape cover, plus a little, plenty of food that are still providing food for our small game, our songbirds, and our pollinators. So it, you're just trying to set up a rotation so that way you keep a, a nice diverse management uh, in your, with doing late season burns. One thing like with this unit is we can't do the spring prescribed burns because the soil usually stays wet so it, it lends itself well towards a late season burn where we could still get that diverse management controlling the woodies and, and providing good habitat. And you know I, I know I didn't mention this this is down in we're down in southeast Missouri and it a different type of habitat than is throughout the state so you're talking about the wetness in the soil in the spring because this is kind of is this kind of like a wetland. Yes sir yeah the, right now we're on Little River Conservation Area where it is due to the soil type it, it stays damper in the spring so it's one of those things it's hard to, to get those nice days in you know the late winter to early spring before pre-growing season to get that diversity that we need. So that's why it lends itself towards the, the late growth season burns to really get the good management in it. Now over here, when was this burn? You were talking about this. It's been a couple years. Uh, we started trying to diversify the management, but this is it's it was ag crop for a few years, and then we pulled it out of ag crop. It was usually it was a soybean field. So we're about two years out from ag production, and you can see, I mean, it's got a lot of goldenrod. It's got some brome sedge, uh, a lot of other just diverse. The seed bank was there. We didn't really plant it. The seed is, was even was there, even though it's been ag crop for several years. So there's a good possibility, even if you've been ag cropping stuff, that if you want to start developing some old field management, the the seed bank is there. There's just a lot of it giving it a chance to grow, and, that, and then again, that's where you can start doing a little diversity and splitting it up with doing some late season burns and and allowing it to grow and, and kind of have like a three to five year rotational management to, to keep that diversity. So when will this field that you just burned here towards the end of August or so, when will this field look like the field right next to it? By next growing season, you should see a 
that should look almost identical. You'll see, but it should have less woodies and a lot of less mm -hmm. Teresa Lespediza in it. So we we'll, should see the good Ford response in it. Uh, it will start to really green it up again next spring. I mean, like I said, there'll be some stuff that will pop up, even though we still got some growing days. But next spring, when everything else is greened up, it'll green up. It'll have a really nice, good component to it where it's starting to provide a lot of the habitat that's needed by the, you know, the different species that use our upland management areas. Now, where can, more, where can people get more information about late season burning and where can they find that info? There's a lot of stuff on our website. I really recommend that you get on our website or call your local MDC office or regional office and get a hold of your local private lands conservationists. They will be more than glad to work with you as far as trying to develop your land um, to get that diverse management. Um, we can work with you as far as writing burn plans and, and loaning you gear. Um, with, mm -hmm. There's also there's a possibility that there may be cost share money out there if you work with private lands conservationists to help to help you be able to better manage the land that you have. All right, I really appreciate it very much. Thank you so much, Jeremy. And I'm gonna echo what he said. If you'd like to learn more about late season prescribed fire and prescribed burns and to help your land uh, to develop that great habitat we're talking about, just get on our website. Check it out at mdc.mo.gov and you can search in the search bar, um, late season burning, prescribed fire, and you can find all the info you need there. And also you can find your private lands conservationist there to get more information. Thanks for tuning in today. You all have a great rest of the day.